Uh, to talk more about this presidential runoff in Peru between left-wing candidate Pedro Castillo and right-wing Keiko Fujimori, we're now joined live by human rights activist Lisbeth Melendez in Washington, D.C., United States. Thank you, Lisbeth, for joining us today. Can you Thank you for having me. Can you begin by telling us a little bit more about these two candidates? What is their background and what type of voters are supporting each other? Well, you know, there's very little that is known outside of the Spanish-speaking media around both uh, Keiko Fujimori and Pedro Castillo. And, you know, what I would probably say to describe it in a few words is Keiko you know, Fujimori is a legacy candidate, uh, the daughter of one of the most corrupt presidents of Peruvian political history, uh, somebody who she has expressed already will pardon had she be, you know, she become the president of the country. And Pedro Castillo, who is an unknown really in the larger in the larger context of politics, somebody who comes from the left side of the, you know of politics and populist, somebody from the ground up, uh, much needs to uh, be defined about who he will become as a president. But he does have the support of many people, not just outside, not just within the capital of Peru, but also outside in um, in what we will call, you know, not the mining centers, not the not uh, the places where the folks are being threatened, but really the places where inequity is large and his promises to um, ensure that equity, justice, and access. Uh, begin uh, to diminish the class divide that is so profound in Peru at this moment. Uh, Keiko Fujimori has uh, agreed to double down in politics around the protection of mining companies, uh, the interests of the copper industry, uh, and leave behind the people who are suffering as they continue to be exploited by mining companies in, in, you know, in extracting such a uh, precious metal. Uh, from the land in Peru. This week, uh, Pedro Castillo met with representatives of victims of forced sterilization during Alberto Fujimori's administration. What do you know about this violation of human rights? Well, this is a, shall we say, a technique that has been used in many countries. I'm originally from Puerto Rico, where forced sterilization of women uh, happened for about 35 years. The United States where people of African descent and indigenous peoples were also sterilized. And so the first step to recognizing the damage done is when the government actually meets with the victims, meets with the people, and there is a beginning of healing and recognition of the damage done, not just uh, for the future of the country, but for the past that so much has, you know, so wounded uh, who got to see a legacy in the country and who was stopped from, um, from leaving a, a legacy, not just biological, but social in the fabric of Peru. And talking about uh, a little bit more of this, uh, what does Keiko Fujimori and her candidacy represent, given the legacy left behind by her father and the allies of the political class? More of the same is, uh, is the short answer. Uh, I am not sure that uh, that Keiko Fujimori is not a candidate that uh, travels with the wind, with the wind forces. Uh, we've seen some of her stances change o over time. Um, she's moved to the left or the right, always to the right of center, but to you know closer to center and further right, and further to the right depends on what she sees her most political advantageous uh, opinions would be. Uh, very much like her father, who, as we know, uh, ended up being an autocrat um, and uh, really doing much to hurt uh, the, you know, the working class, the middle class of the country. The political class in, in Peru uh, would love to see stability to, and no threats to their position and to the emerging oligarchies that exist in Peru. Uh, uh, Fujimori represents much of what that has to do uh, and, and will continue to um, to shore up, where Castillo has very clearly said that um, while not ruling out the conversations that need to have, his stand is one that supports the working class um, in particular um, 
of the country and hopes to give it stability from the from the ground up and not simply by the one percent of the country who, who dominates the, the discourse. Thank you so much, Lisbeth. We appreciate your time and I hope we can talk a little more next time. Thank you. That was Lisbeth Melendez, human rights activist based in